That's my assistant. Her name is. Yes. So CLM was originally, you know, for people in the churches. And now we are going to um, share this with all the humans. Well, all the humans in the world, anyone that's breathing and would like to find their purpose on the planet is not super helpful, right? So, <laughs> this, so this is how I really want you to think about marketing and where people kind of got it wrong. Marketing was never meant to be like, let's figure out your avatar, meaning how old is she and what does she eat for dinner and how many kids does she have and what's her favorite color? Like sometimes that's useful, but most often it's not. And that, that's where people misunderstand or misconstrue figuring out your niche. What a niche is supposed to be is what problem do you solve and how do you uniquely do it? What problem do you solve and how do you uniquely do it? And I'm going to give you some assignments that are going to really help you with this, but I'll just give you a quick example. The Hoover vacuum, the Hoover vacuum is the same, no matter who you sell it to. But if I'm selling the Hoover vacuum to corporate America, I'm going to sell it in a different way than if I knock on your door and sell it, if you're a stay at home mom, but the Hoover vacuum does the same thing. So you've got this situation where you can go and reach all the adult humans Again, not super helpful. So what is the problem you're solving and how you uniquely solve it? So I want you to make these two kind of categories, two lists of what do your people think is the problem <laughs> and what's really the problem? And actually I want you to make two more columns. What do they think is the solution and what is really the solution? So I'm gonna give you some ideas of what I think this might be. So it could be, I thought the problem was, I can't, I thought I just, um, what do they think the problem is why they can't find purpose in their life? They think that it's what, but really it's, and I think for CLM it's, you've been missing the spirituality component. Maybe they've tried to read every self-help book that came their way and they're still lost. Maybe they've tried to perform to their worth on the planet. They've went and got all the awards or degrees or they've climbed the corporate ladder and they still at the end of the day when their head hits the pillow, it's like, is this all there is? That should be your copy in your marketing email, by the way, what I just said. You want to get in their head of what are they saying to themselves at night when their head hits the pillow that I have everything. I'm checking all the boxes. I have a family. I have beautiful children. I'm healthy. I have, and I'm still not feeling it. There's got to be more. Why am I, why haven't, you know, the, the purpose fairy, why hasn't she, you know, waved her wand over my head and given me my purpose and how do you get lucky enough to be given your purpose? Some of my friends seem to have it and I don't. So whatever you, and I want you to think back on the sessions you've done as leaders, what were your people, your participants saying, use those words. I'm 65 years old and I still don't even know my purpose on the planet. I mean, that's what someone said in our group. So go don't try to come up with your own words think about what have they said because it will be things that you can't even see as you're the ones that develop the curriculum my clients i would always ask them when they would gush about me i would always say like well what do you what do you see that i do well and over and over they they would say it's like you have next level thinking well i would never have thought that that was my skill but now that's what i sell you want to take your business from here to there. I, my gift is next level thinking. I can close the gap. So see, I'm, I'm, I want you to listen to what your people are saying, literally using their words. Okay. Yep. Um, so what do they think is the solution versus what's really the solution? So I've tried all the self-help seminars. I've gone, I've jumped up and down and I've yelled and I've raised my hands and I come home and I still feel lost. I've tried, you know, whatever you are hearing that they've tried and they think is the solution versus what is really the solution. And that's really what we have in CLM then. And you, you market it that way. Okay. And then I want you to 
so that's kind of the first thought exercise. What do they think is this problem? What's really the problem? What do they think is this, the solution? And what's really the solution? And I would say what's unique about CLM, again, I've, I've said it, is all the self-help industry is great and it's missing your spiritual being. That piece has been left out. I think that's what you guys bring to the table that's so amazing. Um, but the second thought exercise, and then we can open up for discussion, but is really make a list of the problems that your participants have and what are their aspirations. And that's how you're going to sell it. So again, what keeps them up at night? What would they happily hand their credit card over and say, if you can, if this is all that you say, you're, if you're going to do all that here, I, I, I take all my money. But, so get inside their heads. What are their problems? But what are their aspirations? And their aspirations are, I know I was busy all day, but did I really accomplish anything? That's their problem. You want, you know, and you, you can get in their heads and you can say, do, do you feel like that? Do you feel like, you're, or maybe you're just going through the motions of your life. Or maybe, you know, you're like, is this really adulting? Cause like, this is not, you know, am I on the hamster wheel of life? Am I just, it's this, I'm just supposed to work eight hours a day and then die at the end. I mean, these are kind of things that people are grappling with, right? Hundred yeah. percent. I'm just typing yeah. a little bunch off. So they think yeah. they need to learn more, but really they need to understand themselves more. That just came straight from yeah. God. That came straight yeah. from God. Like <laughs> that's the the problem is they think they need a new strategy. No, they need to connect to their innermost God self. You know, self whatever sacred. Like so, those concepts will help you. So again, don't mark it to a certain person, market a specific problem you solve, but how you solve it. And those people will flock to you and they will say, it's like you're reading my mind. How did you oh. know? And you're like, cause we've been listening <laughs> to you for 17 years, you know? Yes. <laughs> so I hope that yeah. helps. Good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a great process. Thank you. You just blew my mind because I, I, <laughs> Well, you I, blow what you mine every was, time you open your mouth, Ken. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? What? What I think? You know, a, after listening to everything you said, um, I think our genius is next level spirituality. Next level spirituality, because I, I think what's um, what's missing in people's lives is that what they have been taught as religion is toxic. Yes. It has not worked. And yet they feel some kind of obligation to it. Yep. Because once those religious people get a hold of you, they, they got you, you know, Catholic, the Catholic church says, if we get you for the first six years of your life, we've got you forever. Yep, yep. You know, so, so all that stuff goes to the bone in those of us who come from all of this conservative religious fundamentalist religious kind of crap and so what people believe i think is the problem is that what they think is the solution is to give all of that up oh to just throw it all away but they don't know there's an alternative. They don't know there's a next level spirituality. There's, yes. it's not, it's not just two boxes. There's a continuum. Right. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I think if we, if we say to people, you know, you can, you can throw away everything. Um, uh, who was it who said, um, give up everything. They taught you in church. Yeah, forget ev forget everything you were taught at church and at school and at home, um, and throw away everything, everything that, that insults your soul. Insults yeah. your soul. Yes. Ooh, everything yeah. that insults your soul. Right. But then you've got to say, but you don't know another way, and so you're That's scared. That's right. That's right. You're scared That's to right. even throw it away. You know there must be a different That's way, right. but you don't know what it yes. is. We're going to show you That's how right. to 
add to, not just take away. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's exactly bad. right. They're, people live in fear of throwing away that everything they thought was their religious foundation, yep. you know, in life. And, and those of us who have gone through this similar process in MCC, we had to throw away what we were taught because it was killing us, literally. Yes. When MCC first began in the late 1960s, every theology student in seminary wrote their thesis on why MCC will not survive. Oh. And all of their... Yes, will not survive. And all I read dozens of them in the in the in the mid seventies, and and all of them said because it is a church based on sex, it oh. can't survive because it's a church based on sex. And we were saying no, this is not a church based on sex or sexuality. You know, this is a church based on the fact that our spiritual lives were slipping through our fingers. We were literally dying spiritually. Oh. I think one of your big talking points should be you think you can find the answers outside of you by what you do in this world or what you, you know, how you spend your time or whatever, but actually the answers are inside of you and they're already there. We're just going to excavate the answers. So again, people are searching yes. for something outside of them and actually it's inside of you and it's already there. You think that we're going to teach you how to do something new, but you already have the answers, but we know the technology to help you get the right answer, the, the answers from yourself that's already there. I've heard you guys talk that way. So yeah, yes. that yes. is a big talking point too. Right. That's why we call yes, it we're, we're going, right? Yeah. Yeah, of, yes, we're that okay. yes, we're going to we're going to help you mine what you already know, what is already inside of you. Yes. And and to trust it. And, and to, to trust it. it. Even, and we know the even if you are standing you alone. You know, if you have to stand alone in the truth of your own life, it it still is the only way you will survive. Right. And you can even say there's a very, very big concept in sales and marketing that you've tried everything and you've still come up short. Yes. And then you tell people it's not your fault. You were given the wrong roadmap. We have yes. the map. Because their brains will say, it, this sounds like everything else I've done. Because their brain will say, I've tried my whole freaking adult life to figure out my purpose on the planet. And you really think your 18 course thing is going to be the thing. So you've got to conquer that by saying it's not your fault. You've tried every self-help course. You've read all the books. You are a frequent flyer in the self-help section at Barnes and Noble. That would be funny to say, right? Like you, cause you're, you know, and you still come up short. It's not your fault. You were given the wrong or in incomplete directions. That will fly. I mean, that will sell. That will fly. That is beautiful. And, and I do think that answers your question of what do people think is the problem, you know, and, and what is the real but, problem? But, and, and the real problem is that people don't know that there is an alternative. They think that's, you know, the, question. To, that's the answer. When I, when I was typing these, I was up typing the questions Aaron gave us the first four questions. And then I'm like, as I'm typing those, you are saying what they think the problem is and what the solution is and what it really is. I mean, we think it's religion, which means we kind of think it's God, but the religion yeah. is the wrong road to God. Spirituality is the other, is right. Another, right? There so you when, go. You, when no, I'm saying this whole thing, um, one, one, of the, one, of the, one of our selling points here, I think is, um, that very simple truism that religion is you trusting someone else's experience of the sacred. Spirituality is you trusting your own experience of the sacred. Thank mm -hmm. God we are recording. Yes. Yeah. And we got some that's, that's, right there. That, that's, and that's the difference between somebody who felt pushed out of their religion but is willing to give 
a look inside at their own spirituality. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if somebody no, else's religion yes. hurt them, and now you want to invite them to think about and define their own spirituality. And I just I love before Aaron used the word excavate and Ken said mine. And in like yep. my TLM, that's what it felt like. Yeah. You're, yep, you're yep. not giving an outside resource. You are you are you're asking them to go in the whole time. Mm -hmm. Well, in the parallel right. to this, because you're nailing it, we're all we're all we're all nailing it. This is what I thank you for coming. It's we just needed this, right? We're, we don't need to get somewhere. We just need to haul. And um, this parallels can in the sexuality, in the piece that you guys didn't see. There's a piece where can you'll have the right words, but where our theology was not sexualized our sexuality was theologized. And, and mm -hmm. when I was in Mexico yeah. City, Acapulco, and we were doing a massive train the trainer down there, remember that? And um, Cademan at the time came and his train the trainer was that piece. And he drew, he just was talking and drawing at the same time. I'm like, if I had a camera, cause he's never been able to do it again. I, I'm like, I need that again in my head. I've never forgotten it. But he drew the little, the little, you know, white heads of the church and he drew the steeple and he drew arrows and he drew, this is how you understood. This is why our sexuality got all screwed up was because we were trusting their description of a God's understanding of sexuality. And then we flipped it wrong side up, but that's what we've then used yeah. forever in the Bible to teach what God thinks about sex and what the church thinks, right? The whole control and then he flipped it back right side up and I stopped breathing. And <laughs> I've asked him that's, to do it. That's, yeah, yes, that's, that's, you know, when I, when I talk about that, the way I express it is every religious organization that ever existed has developed a theology of sexuality, which means we take what we think we know about God and we use that to theologize sex and yeah. so we end up with all this crazy sick disgusting stuff but what if we flip that and instead of theologizing sex we sexualize theology yes what that's if we take sexy. what we know that's about sex sexy. that's the course you didn't get that's yeah. that's the second half of ken's course when he taught yeah. during the taste yeah. because we took a chunk out we took the second the 201 level out every time and that yeah. was the piece that if people understand it it's breakthrough moment. It's honest to God. Life. Oh, everything we're talking about here is our different different level of, of 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 next level spirituality. I just it is you know that just Thank when you, when you were talking <laughs> um, about next level stuff. Yes. You know, next level spirituality is just a Love pregnant it. concept. It's so good, and I want to. Uh, good one, God. That's yeah. a good. Good one. Um, I want to give you a concept that will save you a lot of hours and money. In your marketing is not where you want to be fancy and unique and clever. In your marketing, you want to be third grade level. Oh, you want to find your purpose on the planet. You actually want to create a life that matters. You want to know that your life had meaning. In the course is when you'll wow them with all these concepts. So I went and asked, I, um, I was just doing this funny poll today. What would your parents say you did as an entrepreneur? And I thought, I'm going to go ask my nine-year-old son, like, Zachary, what do you think I do? And he's like, you give informational talks and help people. I'm like, okay, that, like, that's kind of where you want to be in your marketing, yeah. like that level. So it's not the place to get clever. So in your marketing, give people what they want. And in CLM, you give them what they need, but they didn't even know they needed it. Cause I don't have a lot. I don't think a lot of people are lying in bed at night saying, I just need next level spirituality. Okay. Right. They don't know. So what do they say? I, I, I don't even know if what I'm doing makes a difference. I don't even know what my gifts are. People say I have gifts. What, what, how do you find them? Where are they? That, okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and Aaron, um, along the way, when we talked about marketing, it was either you all, or it was the group, the, the second focus group, Barb, that talked about leveraging the words sacred self and passion. I mean, we should become 
sacred self and passion. And when I when I remember when Cheryl and I when we were doing the when we were um, incorporating sanctuary in the woods, initially Cheryl we were calling ourselves sanctuary resort and whatever. I mean we had this like descriptive title. And thank God. Yeah, resort and tree treat center or something. Yeah, like that. I mean thank God that the person who we were talking to, the consultant team that we built that we bought because we, we were trying to name our Facebook page too, because we still have that old name and we are registering under it. And she's like, but will you call yourself Sanctuary in the Woods? So be Sanctuary in the Woods. And it mm. was like, ding, ding, light bulb. I don't even know what the old title was, right? Because we are Sanctuary in the Woods. And so when, when it was one of you all, I don't know if it was you guys, but that concept of sacred self and passion we didn't use that in classic except as behind the scenes kind of in the inside the beltway language um if you knew if you knew clm if you've been through clm you called it sacred self and passion but i'm just hmm. wondering your perspective when you say third grade simplify it does that resonate with you at all or does you push that off or what do you think no it doesn't creating a life that matters ding 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 really? It's like, well, that's not very sexy. That's exactly what it should be called. <laughs> Literally, when people say, what do you do, Aaron? I'm like, I help people make money and, and they sign up. Like uh, when I was a high performance coach that helps you blah, blah, blah. You're like, uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like it's, 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 it's a hard thing for us great thinkers to do. But no, creating a life that matters. When I remember being on the backyard two years ago when you told me that was what it was call called. And I was like, excuse me? Well, and that's the thing that you think about when you go to bed at night. You don't go to sleep going, oh, I wish my sacred self and passion was more aligned. No. But you do go to bed and you think, yeah. God, I wish my life mattered. How am I making my life matter? Is my life gonna matter when I'm that's gone? Do other people think my life yeah. matters? Like that's it right there, right? That's, that's the age old question that everyone wants to answer. And if you do say sacred self and passion, they're going to say, they're going to make up in their brain what they think you mean. And mm -hmm. they think that sacred means church. And they're, they're like, peace out. I've been hurt by them. I'm not doing that again. I'm, so again, sacred self and passion is what they need, but they don't know they need it. That's what I think. So we think the problem is answer CLM what is it really behind the scenes? It's tying because the line that has saved us in, in classic was that when you understand your self, like your giftedness, right? Um, and then you put that, and then you understand your passion through your own self, your own world's deepest need, your greatest gifts. And then you do that in the service of the sacred that completes a life. Right, that ticks every box that we need of, of companionship, of, of fulfillment, of giving, you know, philanthropy, of um, community, of faith and God. Um, so there's that tagline too, and I think I think it, you know, what I don't want to do is fight for what worked before. I want to have a whole new brain of what's going to work this time. So. Well, I think Ken's idea, and, and this was the program, I mean, you created the program that God put on my heart that I kind of wanted to create, but I, you know, I didn't know how, that I always believed, and I want t-shirts that say my, my superpower is my higher power. I want t-shirts that say God is my guru, that you're looking for a guru outside of you and the guru is connecting with God that's inside of you. Right. The whole, yeah, you're right, Aaron, because the whole point to me, Joe, is, is not, you, 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 you go through sacred in order to understand a little bit more about what sacred is. You open up that concept. And then when you move into self, what we do is we take people through and say, now, do you understand that you are also that? Like, yes. You are yes. divine. Yeah. So it's almost like yeah. you've tried to check the boxes in your life that everyone has told you to do to find meaning. You've tried to find the job, the, the, your dream job. You thought being a parent would make you fulfilled. All these things, you've tried to lose the weight and you still come up short. Like these are the concepts that people are thinking. 
it's and it's like god is almost like the turbo pack of the jet fuel <laughs> that's been missing it's like you've been missing the secret super button like the Sauce. power pack yep. mm -hmm. Here. Yeah, let me ask yeah. you, let me run something else by you. And I'm just, and I'm listening when you answer. Um, but one of the things that never made it in, I'm not sure if it's because it wasn't written yet, but I came across it and it's always pulled at me that um, the 10 rules for being human, you know, it's nine, nine great rules, but really the 10th rule, it says, and you will forget all of this at birth. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, go Is on. It, I have had a That's kind of it. Is the whole remembering or Cheryl the reason we call it um, rediscovering? It's re. That's it's yeah. it's you know we could there we yeah we couldn't do co-creating, but we do believe it's rediscovering. We are that flashlight, you, like the miner, the excavator, like you just said. But part of me is thinking, in either in that early stage or in how we set things up that the the conversation that is CLM is to help you remember it's because like Mary Williams Williams remember that putting Mary Williams Williams Rem Williams. remember long longfellow said we're born trailing the stuff of glory, of, of glory. we are born trailing the stuff of glory but then ever, all these things are superimposed upon us and we forget, we forget who we are. Right. What CLM is trying to do is remind people of who you are. Yeah. I've had big downloads about that, Joby, that your program is definitely about that concept of unlearning things that aren't useful, aren't helpful, problematic, harmful, hurtful, that at birth, it was established, your worth on the planet was established. Like, and you know, there's this great kitchen magnet, something about like, it's not about creating the life, it's about like undoing everything so you get to what was originally there. So that concept, yes, I've been hearing that a lot, that this program, that's what it is. Well, and, and when you so, say it that way, I'm also thinking of um, who said with the, you know, Cheryl, this is you, the carver with the stone, you know, oh, yeah. da, da, da. And then there. David, like David's inside the stone, right? Like I'm just, Michelangelo. Yep. Yeah. So removing the statue from the stone. Yes. Yeah. Removing yeah. what never belonged in the first place. Removing yeah. what wasn't truth. Yes. Yeah. So that's that excavating, exploring, ex, mm -hmm. you know, mining. You can use all those themes and use the Michelangelo um, quote and say, we're going to give you the directions of how to find your own masterpiece. Wow. Um, Terry, always, that always was. Yeah. Yes. That's the, uh, that's the Charlie Knight story in CLM uh, <laughs> about the, the native, old Native American man who said, the creator gives you a song. It's your song. Nobody else can sing your song. You know, and uh, you are the only person who knows your song and the only responsibility you have to the creator and the creation is to faithfully sing your song. Oh. But people will, when you are when you are different, like some of us are different, when we were very young, we started to sing our song and people said, I don't want to hear that song. Mm -hmm. Sing this song instead. Yeah. And so part? we started yeah. singing a different song. And, and many people live their whole lives and die and never sing their own song. Mm. And so one of the things that we say in CLM is, you know, um, that, 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 the, that the creator intended for there to be a harmony in the universe. And until everyone is singing their own song, there is cacophony, there is, there is dissonance, there is not harmony. And so it's important for you to find out who you are and what your gifts are and, and, and to give your gifts, you know, uh, to, to, the, to the human family and to the universe, because that's the only way that harmony is ever going to be uh, uh, reached. And, and many, many of us know what it feels like to have people say, don't sing that song. You know, I want you and to everyone, sing a different I song. Everyone sing everyone this does. one. 
Mm -hmm. Everyone does. I think every, and there's a way in which every person certainly, you know, can, can relate uh, to that. And, and one of the things that we say are saying constantly in CLM, you know, is that you, you have a unique gift that nobody else has. And until you <laughs> discover that, that's what passion is all about. Yep. That's what the song I just oh. tried to write oh. is, is all that's about. That's what people are They're trying about, to figure out. Yep. yep. Find it oh. and then give it away. But there and, is discord. I mean, Ken, that's freaking brilliant. There is yep. discord and not harmony. Planet wise, like planet level. Yes, yes, yes. Literally, our planet right now is in dissonance. Yeah. It is a cacophony. It's not be because there is so much, uh, of, you know, misunderstanding and, and violence and and hatred and prejudice and all of these things because people are not being what they were created to be. I think too that you have. I mean. You can't steal this from me because it's going to be my book, but it's going to be something like the <laughs> yeah, tagline. I'll just give you credit, okay? <laughs> my tagline in my book is being a human is hard. I, let me help. You know, like, like, but I, I want you, like, this is almost like the CLM is like your instruction manual for humaning better, you know? Yes, easier. yes, that's, yes. Like, yes. I mean, and so it's like an instructional manual or instructional instructional guide of how to hu be a human, eliminate suffering in your life and increase joy and purpose and meaning. Like those are the taglines that people want. Like, yeah, I wanna be happy. I wanna have purpose. I wanna suffer less. <laughs> Show me the way. And I think, you, right, you know, Aaron, we, we go through, I mean, I mean, I can, as you guys are saying, you're telling the <laughs> night story, you're saying this story, that story. There are a billion of those stories we use throughout CLM and we say them over I know. And over again. I, I mean, know. There's a story of, uh, you know, the little uh, girl who wanted to go in and talk to her baby brother and uh, the parents didn't want her to be alone with her baby brother. And, you know, she went in and finally they let her and she went in and she said, tell me about God, I've almost forgotten. It's Ooh. all about going right. back. I know. Remembering yeah. And, you know, just re interesting that. Now, what is that T.S. Eliot thing? I will, we'll all go back and we'll come back to the same place where we go, started. Go, you know, go back to the place we began and understand it for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. It's all, we do this over and over and over and over throughout CLM. It's this, it's, it's that theme that goes throughout this entire course. It's, it's that theme that dr is driven throughout this entire course. Well, look at Marianne Williamson's book. It's called A Return to Love. Yes. It's yeah. a returning. It's it's finding God, which is returning to that which always was. I mean. Right. Exactly. We yeah. just say rediscovering the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I got I got to stop y'all for one one minute. And I know that you know I I kind of jumped in the same time as as you were saying something, Terry. I think you wanted to have something to say. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say, Terry. <laughs> let's all breathe and let <laughs> let Terry talk for a minute. <laughs> so as much as I love creating a life that matters because I want my life to matter, I think since this has been created, particularly here in the United States, and I recognize this is not just in the United States, but the lives matter thing is a it's just tenuous now because you know we say black lives matter because they do and then ignorant people say all lives matter and that kind of thing so i just think Ooh, i think we yeah. have to think about that a little bit wow. particularly in our context here in the states which i recognize th there's not this bigotry and hatred in other places praise god but we deal with that so i just I just think that's something that we have to at least consider in this mm. too. Though, though it's exactly what we're trying to do, create lives that matter. And like Krista said, yeah. I go to sleep hoping yeah. that my life has made a difference, but yeah. there's just some buzzwords around that at this sure. point that's, that weren't there. Do you remember asked. though, Joe, do you remember Joe, when we first launched creating a life that matters, we got pushed back from a few people, not many, but, but they were very vocal. And what they said was all lives matter. Oh. That was 15 years ago. Wow. We said creating uh. a life that matters. And they said then all lives matter. Right. Yeah. And we said, but that's, we know that. We know that. That's not, we're not saying that's not true. We're saying this. Like right now, people who say, well, all lives matter. 
Well, yes, but but if but if you are a privileged person, you know, uh, when we say Black Lives Matter, it's like somebody who goes to a right. a breast cancer march and says all cancer matters. Well, of course, all cancer matters. I that's know. just not what we're talking yeah. about right yeah. now. Yeah, that's I, dang it. Hey, hey, one, one of the things. One, one of the things that um, uh, that I heard early on when CLM was was launching uh, was, well, I already know that my life matters, so I must not need this course. Oh, okay, okay, this is good. We have to listen to this feedback. <laughs> but now I'm thinking of a thought that was in my head before, and just some of the word choice we had, and um, you know, you said, you said like human be human better, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I was like, oh, but, but human happy, right? We're so much of that, that introspection. And I know we said, when you talk about sacred self and passion, we're like, well, we don't want sacred people hear church and then they run away before we tell yes. them what we think sacred means. But I do think that self bit, maybe, maybe that needs to come in more because I think so much of it is, and, and I hear what you're saying about the lives matter. And that's great feedback because that's going to keep echoing now, but um, it, it's, I think a lot of times we spend energy, we people spend energy, does my life matter to somebody else? Does somebody else see the value in me? And from my mm. taste of CLM, the mind shift for me was, what do I see in myself? Yeah. And, you know, and it, it kind of goes to everything like self-care, right? So Joby and Dr. Aaron, we preached on this all last week, that when you take care of yourself, when you do things for yourself, when you yourself are fulfilled, then you do help people and you do give more. And, and that yeah. self piece, I mean, I don't want to go self-help, right? I mean, that's such a genre that's so big, so, but. Um, I so know. what I would have named CLM if I was creating it, if I was creating the Dr. Aaron version, I was going to call it the higher life project. <laughs> The higher life project. I mean, how to have a the higher life. Yeah. How to rate, how to elevate your joy, your purpose, your passion. And it's because you're, you're, you're connecting with your higher self, which is God. I mean, that's the, I'm just saying that's the concept that you want to kind of think about. And yeah, maybe you have to totally rename it something else, but you know, Ooh. mining, mining the masterpiece. Ooh, wow. Mining, what? mining. What? Oh God. Let me go back to mining or excavating. Mining the masterpiece that is you, like mining the masterpiece, something like that, like a whole different concept. What, what about uh, what about what about next level life? Yeah, it's like something like that. Next everyone level wants, life. Everyone wants a next level life. You know, and it would be. I mean, we don't have to come up with the name right now, but start thinking. Like maybe it's called Elevate the Elevate Project. I mean, you know, it's it's like. How, and then the tagline is finding your next level in li you know, life, your next level joy, your next level purpose, your next level passion, your, all those things. So that's oh, the concept. Yeah. We, we did, oh shit, we did, Cheryl, we, when we were trying to write, everyone asked <laughs> about more of CLM. And so we wrote CL, we had two people, two facilitators, write CLM more, like CLMMMM more. Remember that, Cheryl? Yep. And the, the, the um, yeah. the logo was going to be that tree with deep roots. It was going to go both and. It was going to go up and down at the same yeah. time. So when you say elevate and mining, two things we've talked about tonight, mm. right? So let's let's just. I mean, I don't want a name tonight because I'm going to cry if we don't call it CLM. But um, <laughs> I'll get over myself. You know, maybe. that could be a tagline. That could be a tagline. Right. And um, but the whole concept of elevating it's our thoughts right it's a, everything a new level makes all the sense than what we said a thousand times tonight and yet the way we do that is going to be by digging deeper you know yeah. in us in self and so there's something to either holding self up and Aaron when we wrote the curriculum the reason we put sacred first sacred self passion besides the um what's his name was because we thought people could, and, and it became true, they could talk more easily about something that was out there, like this God mm -hmm. thing that wasn't in here, it was out there. And so it was, it, was, it was just dipping your toe in, right? But it got them to talking and having safe space and, you know, 
and then when we came back, it, we came back like a laser focus inward. And that's when, like Cheryl said, until they understood, oh, you are a slice of that sacred, you know, energy. Um, so trick on you, you know, Terry. I, I think I think one of the 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 thing that I got most out of sacred personally was that it allowed me for the first time, much like what we were saying at the beginning, kind of next level stuff that to throw away the stuff that insulted my soul. But it was that because in sacred, I learned that I could rethink what I understood sacred to be, you know, whether that's God, higher power, whatever, right? That, that God wasn't necessarily what they told me God was. God was how I understand God to be for myself and, you know, whatever. Wow. That yeah. allows me when I get to self to rethink myself also and not be the person they always told me I was or had to be or, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. big time. Yes. That's yes. And when that, what, what, what we learned from people who went through this was they realized that religion is about beliefs and spirituality is about values. Right. right. When you can, when you can live according to values instead of beliefs you know, then you can create, you know, then you can identify what your gift is and you find the power, you know, to give it because, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the only way that, you know, the, the council on church union, which was a division of the um, council of uh, churches in, in the United States several years ago said that MCC was the only successful ecumenical movement in the 2000 year history of Christianity. They said the only other thing that even compares are military chapels because people from different Christian denominations can go through the same chapel and worship together. But the difference is that in MCC, people stay together in community. And the reason that's possible is because we understand that we can have different beliefs as long as we have the same values. values that's, yes. what, that's what AA was grounded on. Mm. It's the most powerful spiritual program humans have ever seen in the last hundred yeah. years. Yeah. Like, you know, it, but it was a spiritual problem to a spiritual solution. Wow. Built by Christians. Yep. Yep. We can yep. stay together um, and worship yeah. because we had. Um, well, because we have the same values, and even if our values aren't exactly the same, we we trust that each person's experience of God, or each person's that 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 has value. You know that we don't have to all have come from that very same belief system or that very same value. Even you know it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Well, and know? that that goes back to tonight. I mean. What Troy said, when Troy, I mean, when he founded the denomination, it was around the concept of open table. He's not religion or spirituality or a person's path to God is so individual. We're not going to put a class in front of your ability to come to communion. So again, the only place in the planet can where you come as you are, come with your beliefs, come and still take this wafer, take this um, wine, let it become whatever you need to believe it to be. We don't that wasn't our worry. It was come to the table and eat together so we wouldn't eat each other, right? It's a, a <laughs> whole different concept. And, um, but that, that, because he did that, because that was our shared value, and then we practiced the value, it became our DNA. Anybody is welcome here. You know, when we worked right. so hard in Toronto for a yeah. tagline, it became welcome home. And, and we just but didn't- Remember what- um, you know, one, one, of the, one of the things that Lily and I always taught in the church I summits was every person is welcome here. Every behavior is not welcome Absolutely. here. Right. Because yeah. Absolutely. there are people whose beliefs um, conflict with our values. Right. And when those people come into community, I have seen one person destroy a whole community. Yeah. Because... Yeah. Because they're be because they believed something, you know. In in, I, in I, I'm thinking of a church, an MC ch church right now, who felt like everybody had to be welcome, and so they welcomed this totally crazy person 
who came in and just wreaked havoc. And by the time I got into that church and said to them, this person does not have the right to destroy your community, it had never occurred to them yeah. that it was okay for them to say to this person, you are welcome here, but this behavior is right. not welcome here. Yeah. yeah. Even Jesus said, I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. 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 But something like yeah. The, the welcome home project. I mean, returning to yourself. And I mean, it's, you know, this is the kind of theme we need to think of. Yeah. Wow. Well, we have kicked around a lot and kept you a lot longer than we had intended. Oh, um, oh that was fun. What is? Uh, oh, thank you so much. Well, it's like my drug of choice, right? What we just did there. <laughs> Maybe, I, I'm on a I'm on a high right now. So, <laughs> so let me do this. I'm not gonna lose the, I'm not gonna lose the high. Okay? Um, oh, I love it. After this conversation, and you're thinking of CLM, I, and that no no one bucket. What is a word, a description, a feel? I want everyone to just, where are you right now about this? Like we're taking this online. We're taking it to all who will come, right? We're taking it, what is, after having this amazing time of sharing and creativity, one more word or, you know, phrase or something into the bucket from each of us. Mine is next level. Everything we're talking about here is the next level. Uh, it's funny, Ken, because I'm I'm going in the other direction, but for the same reason, I'm saying mining self. Oh, <laughs> those are my echoes. Going deeper. I'm, going I'm deeper. Going yeah. Mining, dig down to pull. Yeah. <laughs> that is your next level, Christian. Is that's my it. next level. Well, right. Yeah. Maybe that's. <laughs> we'll have choices. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mining me. It's like. Mining me. Mm. I, this isn't the name of it, but just the concept like called and equipped. It's like, it's like there, there's a calling over your life and you go forth. And so, but I'm also trying to reconcile the same, like going high, but low, like deep and wide uh, roots and, you know, reach. And so uh, it'll come to me because it always does. But um, I'm also seeing the like, yeah, that, deep but go that that's, uh, you know, that's such an important part of the original CLM was, was to help people, first of all, believe that they were gifted, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that they had a gift which was indispensable mm -hmm. to human community, and then to help them find the, the ability to step out and offer that gift, to, to give it away, you know, to first of all, believe that they have one, and then to identify it. We really focused on people find what is what can you do yep. that will change the world? And yep. that was a revelation to so many people. You know, the idea that that they had a gift that the world needed and that unless they gave it, you know, the, 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 the again, that harmony would not be there. The body would not be complete, you know, with without their gift. And then to have them give it, learn to give it away. I, I told the story after we did our pilots here, we had two elderly women who went through the original CLM pilot here in Austin. And at the very end, we asked people, you know, to identify their gift and to name it. And, and uh, this woman who at that time was, I don't know, she was already in her seventies, I, I, I guess. And, and she, she, she was the only person in the pilot who stood up and just cried and said, I just don't know, I don't think I have one. I just can't think of it. I don't know what you're talking about. And one day, about three months later, I drove into the parking lot of the church and, and this woman who was probably at least 75 then was on her knees planting flowers in, in the flower beds around the church. And she jumped up and before I could even get out of my car, she was hugging me and saying, 
this is it. I found it. This is it. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it was just, um, that was Bobby. Y'all know, some of you know Bobby. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. One of the Bobby and that... Rosie, by the way, these are two women who have been together 60 years. Fantastic. These two women wow. have been together 60 years. Well, and they were chosen by Troy, right, to be the women, the female couple at the first March on Washington, right, Ken, the first wedding? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Good crowd. Hey, what up? Um, I need Barb or Cheryl or Terry. I'm, I'm politely giving you thought time. I, I was going to say with you, I love the tree thing that we're growing higher, but we're also digging deeper. And I think it just, I don't, I don't have the words in, in a concise thing, but I just think okay. it speaks to the peaks and valleys part that we okay. also do, that there are highs and lows in our lives that we recognize and how they, they inform us of, you know, where to go or where we've been. And it, it points us where we're going and that kind of thing. So there's Ooh. something that I think, yeah. you know. Growing higher by going deeper. Growing higher by going deeper. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Terry. Cheryl or Barb? I, I put mine in the chat, Joby. Find your life song and sing it out loud. <laughs> oh. The complimentary story to that, Aaron and Kristen. 17 is so full, uh, 3.5. The Legend of Bagger Vance is in there. Uh -huh. The songs. And the first one is the story of, you know, um, Ute Mountain and um, the song that's inside Little little Person. But the other one is from the tribe. And this is one something we'll probably kick out of CLM or, or properly source it. But that when someone was born into the world, you know, the, the women of the tribe would, would sing the song to the baby. And they sang the song so many times. And then when the, the baby was born, they sang the song. And at every birthday, they sang the song. And at every kind of, you know, so this person understood, like they were given, that was their song. And again, the world takes away a verse or changes mm -hmm. one word in this line, you know, just little tiny things that we don't even notice. Um, so there's a whole bunch, Terry, and I'm just thinking if that's the, if, if we drive all the way to 3.5, 3.5, you know, it's the epitome and there's so much in there. Um, but it is about swinging and, I mean, getting in the game, right? Playing the game, get in the goddamn game, swing, your swing. And that's from the legend, legend of, legend of Bagger Vance. And then the two things around song is how we trust they've had it from birth and it come, it can come from God or can, if we get out of God, it can come from community, right? But the people who loved you or who knew you or who knew where you came from, there's the song. And, uh, and then our job, because we keep getting it violated along the way, um, it's to rediscover it and, and to sing it. And what hit me, Barb, not me, but like it's my, ob how do I get a person to, it's my obligation to discover it, to join that universal choir such that the world yeah. can vibrate of that vibration of love, that, that original vibration, right, of creation mm -hmm. without using mm -hmm. packed words like that. So I'm right there with you. Woo! Cheryl. I just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of a song um, written by Kathy Bridges a long time ago. Um, you probably don't know her, most of you won't, but, uh, and she, she wrote a song, song based on Psalm 1. And, um, and, and the words in the chorus, there's a part of it I can't remember, but it says, and we will be like a tree planted by water, oh, yes. nourished by the spirit of God. And we will make something in due season and everything we do will prosper. Yes, it's a fabulous, oh, I don't have, yeah. do you have a, Oh, that's a mm -hmm. nourished by the spirit of God, and we will. 
Do you guys, you wouldn't know it yet. No one would know it because it's just from her. It's on her album. A friend of ours from MCC, Long Beach. But that, you know, I just, like you said, we'll- Say that again, Cheryl. Give me, give me the, um, we'll, we will be- We'll be like a tree planted by water, nourished by the spirit of God. That's a deeper part, right? And we will make that uh, in due season. I can't remember the words exactly. And everything we do, everything we do will prosper. What's her name? Uh, Kathy Bridges, C-A-T-H-Y Bridges. Uh, it's almost like, I love the word prosper, prosper. and I love a peer or whatever alliteration, but like planted and prosperous or something yeah. or like, oh yeah you know wow i know mm. yeah, yeah. And prosperous yo mm. wow. it's, it's there I... so it is, but there's the tree um yeah. i love the tree i think that's it was so good and it was prosperous. it was going deeper but that but there's someone said it tonight too there's there's alliteration here there's leaves and there's there's um Oh, someone just, I wrote it down. I've written everything down, but it, there's something around that higher. Uh, I know, like rooted. I, we're right there on it. <laughs> rooted, however you guys say it, rooted. Like, where are you rooted? Reaching and rooted. Yeah, something around rooted so we can reach. I mean, it's like if once rooted, we can reach. We're rooted and reaching, planted and prosperous. Now I got the, yeah, it's uh, uh yeah. Well, you know what is interesting, Terry, when you say Rooted that? Rooted and reaching. Uh -huh. Sanctuary. Rooting and reaching. Is our, um, I mean, we're sanctuary in the woods, for God's sake. And our, um, our, yeah, it's a tree, our, yeah. our hard logo stuff is the tree, tree. grasses. So it's all about seeing through the grasses. I stole that for APL Go. Yep, I did. Um, yeah. I was like, mm, that's a. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that was Salem's, or that was, that was sanctuary's first. Um, uh, yeah, so oh goodness. Well, it is, it is one hour and we asked y'all for 30 minutes. Um, whew. Do we really? Wow. That's a lot in a, in a, in a very short time, but that's how we kind of did this the first time, right? Y'all, we kind of just went where it took us and you have a cool shirt. Okay, and we will bring forth fruit in due season. Yes, and there we go. We will prosper. Hold on. So sing it, Cheryl. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we will be like a tree planted by water, nourished by the spirit of God, and we will bring forth fruit in due season. And everything we do, everything we do will prosper. Oh, yeah, it was good. Oh. Well, you wanted some new media for your program, right? Someone said they know this woman. Well, yeah, and we can go back to her, you know. Pardon? Is yeah, this the song? Hang on. Can y'all hear this? What? Yes, the one. That's yep. it. Based on song one. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Yeah, because we can't. I mean, it's a whole bunch of there's a lot, whole bunch of sinning going on in that song. It's it's a tragic song. It, I can't hear you, Cheryl. Uh, oh, there she is. She's teleported oh, somewhere. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, we just lost all power. Sorry. Oh, wow. Oh, that what you did. Yep. And we, and she still kept us recording. Sorry. I missed some of, I, when I was going there, Terry, some of the language is pretty um, conservative and scary, but gotcha. that little piece of that, that's Long Beach music, right? So. Yes, it is. But it's phenomenal. So. 
Oh, okay. I keep trying to have to let y'all go home and you don't want to leave. So I get that. <laughs> now I'm stuck on prosperous and prosperity. And I love, I love, I love those words now. So I, I'm well, well, in the, in the uh, there is a distinct understanding of prosperity theology or prosperity thinking in the church. Yeah. Um, that's a, that, that's, a that's not a good thing. Well, that's okay. what I think. Or, that. it's gotta be kind of negative. Language. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I was just going to say prosperous. People are going to think it's all about money. So uh, I don't uh, think it's our word, but we're, we're on to the theme will come to us. It'll come. The naming yes. thing is always the last thing because we got to figure out what it is. Yep, that's right. The one, the one, only one way I, I would narrow down our market would be to, to I, I think it needs to be adults, not um, children or teenagers or anything else, but adults. You know, yep. because yeah, I think you're very much right. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. So Terry's Ooh. popping with are with we planted and purposeful? Um, mm -hmm. And what we can't also do, my caps is on planted and purposeful. The other word that's very packed but is part of us is passion and passion. Yeah. And Aaron, when you say what's missing in people's lives, you know, passion, I mean, not, not necessarily a sexual passion, but like a passion for being alive, a passion for living, oh, yeah. a passion for- Purpose, oh, yeah. purpose, passion, having like, a different. purpose. Like, so your passion is yeah. your purpose. Yeah. yeah. I love that you teach it as passion. I just think when it comes to the naming convention, passion just like your definition of sacred those are words you need to define inside the curriculum you know when i think yeah. about basic design where you, right. you you tell a story to get everybody on the same vocabulary yeah. words before you go further in and, and that's one of those words too many people bring their own baggage with that word um like you yep. don't want to throw it out you want to keep it in there you just not, might not want it in the title yeah yeah, one, one of the things that I think helps with all of these, you know, packed words is that the way we name those those courses is rediscovering relationship with. Yeah. And so it's not. It's 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 that's it's saying, you know, you might have thought of it as this, but let's go back and rediscover, you know, your relationship with this in a different way, you know. So it's in battery, you got the color that, that word rediscovering, that word rediscovering is absolutely essential to us here. We are talking about moving from where we used to be to a new place. Remember where you came from. Remember how 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 dark that place could be. Remember how how debilitating that place could be. And, and what we want to talk about is where you could go from there. You know, remember where you came from, but but keep this vision in sight, you know, about where what you can possibly be and 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 become. Yep. All right. I am feeling the energy weighing a tad. I think we're tired. I think we did amazing things. We did. And um, man, we can't thank you enough for. It, it is. You're priming our pump. I just, I'm so yes. sad that Lee couldn't be here to be a part of this because she is, she's as receptive and as creative as any one of us on this, you know, she's just amazing. And so we will obviously give this to her for review. Um, but I almost want to think, and maybe check me, Barb, Cheryl, Ken, part of me wants to just turn this off and go for a walk, like not do more tonight, <laughs> like just... <laughs> Yeah, Take it I think in. that's I think that's a good idea, Joe. I I do want to I do want to to just pose one kind of foundational question as we close, which is, are we thinking about because CLM as we have known it has been very successful in church context. We understand that some of classic CLM needs to be revised, updated, and so forth. Are we talking about revising and updating and keeping CLM in that church option and creating a new Zoom experience that has a new name 
but has the same kind of foundational uh, divisions and energies as CLM. Uh, uh, is, is that what we're doing here? Well, or are we talking about replacing CLM altogether? Yes, we think. The one thing that we took from the group, yes, yes, maybe, a yes, and. But the one thing we took from the group, Ken, and I think this was Aaron and Kristen from your group, was do one thing. Don't create an online version and a home version and this version and a, and a, and a, and a hybrid version. Do one thing first. And like CLM the first time, we, we wrote three courses to be taught one night a week, you know, 18 sessions, whatever. And then it morphed because we had to deliver it. Like it, it, needed, it needed morphing and we morphed it. And we, and we adjusted it a little bit to be able to be delivered in those contexts. I think the thing that we're here on and is one, we think CLM was successful, <laughs> you know? And 17 years of something being taught and, and being positioned in our denomination as a part of leadership, you know, a, pre, a prerequisite. There's many ways, and every one of us could tell a hundred stories of lives changed. And we have to think, and this is where I think Aaron has helped me so much. We've got to think so much bigger, you know, not, not a thousand, but 10,000, but a hundred thousand, but hundreds of thousands. Like we have to, so we have to kind of break open CLM like we broke open your understanding of God, the name of God, what it meant, right? And, and so my energy, Ken, to answer the question is, I think we have to, we, we have to take what was, what, I mean, it ain't broken, right? It is still unbroken. It does its job. So the bones, you're gonna fight me a long time for the bones, you know, they, they did their job in a little piece of shit, taste of self, needly wiggly trial, you know, they still were, they, they, they did. I think the pieces of how they're delivered, um, what is the supporting story? What's the language we're gonna fight about this time? You know, the words we're gonna use. There's so much more technology and brain science behind us, right? And a requirement to be multicultural, a requirement to be to humans, not church humans, because the church that could get in the way, right? And some of those things that were delivery system first time, if we stay contained by them, it's like being Jesus instead of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're being contained and we need to be free. Um, so we, we will have to make a decision about closing down classic CLM, you know, or not closing down classic CLM. And I think we have to figure that out along the way. <sighs> because MCC is changing too, right? And who's gonna deliver this and what skills they need is gonna change, is being, is very different. So there's a whole bunch of bones that are really good and they're also all leverageable, right? There are very few people who have a bad word for CLM. I mean, that's almost ridiculous, right? I know one person and they don't like the title and they've never taken the course. I, other than that, <laughs> you're pushed to find someone to speak poorly of, of CLM. So we, gotta, yeah. we have to rest on that and use that as kind of a trampoline of what a gift it was now we just need to deliver it differently. So my, my other final question would be then, if we are talking about replacing classic CLM with a new CLM, um, is the new CLM only for Zoom or will it continue to be um, <clears throat> offered you know, uh, in face-to-face? Yeah, it's a fair question. And I think I think the, the focus group said, do it, build it one way first. And that would be for Zoom because Zoom is what delivers to, Zoom takes us out of brick and mortar, you know? And, and I think, I mean, I was really of the ilk that there could be a brick and mortar component midweek. But I think what we heard from the focus groups was you're, you're, 
you're overcomplicating things when you do it like that. There's gonna be more moving parts, uncontrollable moving parts. We can control a Zoom version and produce and spend money on a Zoom version. And then I say, let's, yep. let's do the money, let's test it out, let's test it out twice and then see if, if there are brick and mortar components as the world goes back mm. together. Yeah, and then that the, the, the last thing is that that brings up all kinds of proprietary issues. Oh God, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Which probably you and I, Joe, need to spend some time talking about. You know, as two of the original three authors, we need to talk about uh, proprietorship. Ownership. You know, of, of, of this whole project as, as we move forward. That's a totally separate thing. Well, that's but, where, but that I, that's necessary. The day that Aaron and I were taking a class together, I think it was in March or April of last year. And the day that I almost fell off my bike when I was calling her and saying, I can take C, we can take CLM online. Um, part of what, on the way back, I'll never forget the bike ride, Aaron, but you said, you know, we need to get some lawyers. We need to get some people smarter than us in some of these areas. And especially a year later that can talk about how do you keep things proprietary? How do you stop people yeah. from just taking it and thinking they can do it, you know? And, and so I think this time, and if anything, with last time proves to us, we need um, representation. We need guidance in, in a lot of these areas. Cause I would like the facilitators to be paid. You know, I want the uh, people who are gonna deliver it. I want them, I want this to be a monetizable event on a number of levels, just like CLM was for the churches. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we could end, Ken, do you have your song close by? Uh, yes. Um, Kristen and Terry and Aaron, we really did agree that the, the comments we got, Aaron, when you say listen to the people, the comments we got of closing each of the four sessions with how could anyone, I mean, some people, that bit alone of that body work and the song, um, they don't remember any of the content, but they remember what that did to them. Mm. And so we, we talked about music for each of the different courses and um, there's a song that two of the people who um, have gone through CLM, uh, Diane, Leah in Toronto, they wrote a song called Connected. And we played that and it's a beautiful course song, but we didn't have one for passion. And we just interviewed um, Shelly King, who was on the cover of the Rolling Stone just recently, a very good friend of, of, of Sanctuary and Tom and Ken's. Um, and Ken said, what about if I took a stab at writing and then we give Shelly a call and say, will you, you know, put music to this and record it for us? So would it be okay if I um, invite you, Ken, to have these three listen to it for the, you're, you're, you're part of seven sure. people on the planet who've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, these, of course, are, are these are, these are lyrics. Um, and Shelly King, who was uh, chosen by the state legislature of Texas as the Texas mu first woman Texas musician of the year. Uh, we're going to ask her. She's a real close friend, and and um, so I asked the team. You know, if I write the lyrics, uh, and then we asked Shelley to to write music. She's uh, on tour in New York right now. She's actually on her way back uh, to Texas uh, right now. But anyway, these are the these are the words that that I wrote. Uh, the title uh, is "Give It Away." It's two verses and two choruses. It's the light that shines farther down your path than you've ever seen before. It's the one key on that silver ring that opens that last locked door. It's the melody only you know and the song only you can sing. To the deepest need this world still has, it's the gift only you can bring. It's your passion, it's your purpose, it's your calling, it's why you're here. It's your reason for daily rising and your peace at the end of the day. So when you find it, give it away. When you find it, give it away. When you find it, give it away. It's the breath and wind that lifts your wings, that lets you soar and fly. The hand writing clearly on your heart, a truth you can't deny. It's the bell that rings to signify this is your appointed hour. The voice that whispers in your ear now, step into your power. 
It's your passion, it's your purpose, it's your calling, it's why you're here. It's your reason for daily rising and your peace at the end of the day. So when you find it, give it away. When you find it, give it away. When you find it, give it away. That's phenomenal. That That's amazing, Ken. Absolutely gorgeous. Whoo! Goosebumps. I, I think that's so meaningful. I think so often we say, find your thing and keep it. And to say, find it and give it away. God, that is so much the principle of what you're trying to teach there. How many of the words tonight that we used that we hadn't heard the song are in the song? I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And yeah. enough from classic, the idea of purpose mm. in CLM classic is... My friends, mm. we could just keep on going. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask you to, but I, I. do think it would be really wonderful if you could put negative ions through your lungs right now. If you could get outside somewhere, and breathe, <laughs> and walk, and be. Yeah, these guys are all. They're all on drops. Oh, Jerry's not the only one that on drops. <laughs> oh my God, Nick. We're sending you new drops. Jerry will get you on the drops. Negative ions, straight from God, <laughs> through a plant. All right, <laughs> Kristen, Aaron, thank you for being guests that are no longer guests at the table. Thank and, you, um, everybody. That was amazing. Man, thank oh, you. Thank we you. Will, we will not overuse you. you. We will leverage you. We will love you. Oh, You're use me. <laughs> thank you for all your help. Yeah. That's, yes. Thank you so much. Oh. Mm. Terry, good to have you back, hon. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you. I love your, yes. I love your background, yes. Terry. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And uh, lift up uh, just Lily and her family, her mom, as we um, head out for a walk somewhere. Okay. Love you all. Love y'all. See you love later. You. Bye. 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 Bye.